Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Attitudes. I'm Linda Dano. Hi, I'm Dee Kelly. Well, yeah, what a nice great crowd today. Nice big crowd. Yeah. What? You, you missed the film? What? <laughs> they all, got them all in here. Packed in here. Yeah. We love that. Well, Good. what everybody kind of show are we going to have today? We have a marvelous show. But someone told me that you have something to show me that I'm going to love because I love horseback riding. I do. Tell it's is a this surprise. really? Yeah. This is, uh, well, I will bring it out at some point in the show. This is a, really a f to die for thing. Is this has ne to do with horses. Is this Neiman Marcus's Christmas catalog? Yeah. I can't believe some of the things they have in there. <gasps> Wait till you see this. Sensational. Thing will die. All right. You're you going to buy it for me? Uh -huh. Wait, I hear how much it is. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, yeah. All right. She's so cute, isn't she? But she we never has a dime. I never carry I money. I pay for everything. Uh, every time. But I wait till we get up to the cash register. And then I say, do you have any money? And I, like a bozo, say, oh, sure. Sure. She'll pay for it. I say, oh, I forgot the peas. And I walk away. I do that all the You're time. You're awful to me. Speaking of food, yeah. we have our Jewish grandma here oh, to yes. teach us how to make real Jewish penicillin, yeah. otherwise known as real chicken soup. That's right. She's here because coming. I was sick uh, the last couple of shows. I had yeah. the flu. And they called her up quick like that to get her over here to give me some chicken soup. She made it for me. Oh, it's so good. Think I'll just no, feel like a wonderful. new person? Yeah, it's really wonderful. And she's been here cooking with her grandson, and it's terrific. You're going to like her. That hope wasn't her. No. That that's... noise I heard. <laughs> that fall. That's no. Thelma Koch. Yeah. Now, we have our, well, you know Kate Mulgrew. Yes, Mulgrew. Kate Mulgrew is a wonderful actress, and she's part of the new Lifetime family. She has a yeah. new show on Lifetime about parenting. Our network is getting... Yeah. Pretty yeah. terrific. Interesting lady with children of her own. You're gonna like her. She's a nice. She's a nice, nice person, but a, a really good actress. She, she has a good show. You'll you'll like it. Okay. All right. Let's meet our first guest. Want Who to? is a first class character actor? As he himself says, I go from film to film to film, spending maybe two weeks on each one. By the time the movie comes out, I don't even remember it. But viewers remember him, and he's as much a character in real life as he is in the movies. Please welcome the wonderful Ned Beatty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you? Stop, stop, stop. Boy, you're... Please. So... Uh, your face is well known, everybody. Yeah. Isn't it you? the truth? Isn't it the truth? It's fun to be in New York, because you walk down the street and people sort of know that they know you, but they're not sure from, from, from where. what? Yeah. And uh, I used to have a good friend when I was... Last time I was working here was in the Great White Hope some years ago in the late 60s, and uh, mm -hmm. I understated a wonderful actor named George Matthews. And George had been in about... Maybe, I don't know, a thousand movies. He'd yeah. just been in all these movies. And everybody knew George and very seldom ever knew his name. Yeah. But when you walked out of the street with George, you get an awful lot of this. Yeah. You know? And George is wonderful about it. He was sort of a, he was kind of a hard nose. He's a very wonderful hard nose. But he's a big Irishman. Oh. Your he's, people. Yeah, he, he, Herbie. Her little teeth. Some of my people. Oh, Watch what you say. Yeah, really. But George had yeah, one of his voices like that. Uh, he grew up in Manhattan, and he also had grown up a little bit in Dublin. He had some kind of accent I knew you never heard I'd of. I'd recognize it. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it was kind of high, but it had a lot of that whiskey in it. And people would do this to George on the street, and George would say things like, Aunt Harriet says if you don't call, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and the poor guy is going like, yeah, I know I know this guy. I must have an Aunt Harriet. You know, he's yeah. working on it. Do you like being successful as an actor? I mean, in your it, kind of, I can't even call it a resume, it's like an epic novel. Oh. There are pages and pages and pages <laughs> of films that you've done, but you still are able to have some privacy. Do you, well, sure. do you prefer that? Oh, sure. I mean, I, I have friends I, that I work with. I see Burt Reynolds from time to time. I have uh, some people I've worked with over the years who who really don't have much privacy. And yeah. I wouldn't trade with them for anything in the world. But yeah. uh, well, there's a couple of things I'd trade with Bert. Yeah, a couple. Don't say it. Well, no, okay. Yeah, okay. don't say it. We'll, we'll you it. started this business when you were 10 years old. Well, sort of. How, how did it begin? Well, well I actually started as a singer. And, and one of the reasons I got, I, I like to sing, 
But for some strange reason, my voice changed when I was very, very young. Yeah. And I became like a basso when I was 10 years old. So I used to sing in this boys' quartet, but we sang, we sounded like men. Yeah. We were these 10-year-old guys. What a you know? gimmick. Yeah, well, it was just kind of weird. And Dwarfs. people would have us to church, you know, and they'd have us over here and everything. Yeah, well, I guess we did. I mean, we looked, we, were, we weren't, we like, weren't men, but we sang with those same voices. We, yeah. didn't, we weren't boy sopranos and altos and all that kind of stuff. We were like 10, 11, 12 years old, and, we're all, and we started off singing barbershop music and gospel music. We used to sing church a lot. And um, then that sort of gravitated into acting somehow. And theater and all of that. Now, we understand you have eight children. Well, eight. Eight. You may children. understand that, but no. I have a lot of trouble with it. <laughs> I, <laughs> no wonder you have to keep making film That's after right. film after film well, after film. Why, are you, why do you really? keep working? Well, That's it. Uh, One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight reasons yeah. why. You know, we, we had a conversation. We got to, to meet Robert Conrad and his wife on a wonderful weekend out in Hawaii. Uh, just, we just came back from it just this last weekend. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes the money would come up, and the word that will always follow money was tuition. <laughs> oh, oh, God tuition. help you. Are any of them daughters? Yeah, three daughters. Five oh. sons, three daughters. Could have been uh, worse. Imagine marrying all eight if they were girls. Right, yeah. Oh. My daughter, the, girl, the girls are easier. I mean, are they? Oh, yeah. They act more like human beings. I don't know, sons. <laughs> Is that, is that true? You know, I mean, nine times out of ten, you know, you could swear they were human beings. Son sometimes you know, could go either way. He could be a slug. I don't know. This would only. <laughs> Tell us no, about no, no. the woman who conceived these children and gave birth to all eight of them. Her three name. Three women. They don't wake women like they used to, guys. I'm telling you. Now, Took three goes. That was weird. Was it? One three lady women? laughed. Thank you, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've been, I've been, I've been blessed by eight children. And, and blessed by three wives too, I guess. So it is three yeah. wives. Now your present yes. wife, her name. Tell us her name. Tell everyone her name and my, how she got it. Oh, my present wife's name is Tinker, and she really doesn't answer anything else. She has, her, she has a real name. Her real name was Dorothy, which we, since she didn't use it, we named our youngest oh, daughter, whose nice. name was Dorothy. Yeah. And uh, but no, my wife, uh, my wife's mother. They live here in town. Her dad is a, a banker here in, the, in New York City, and they were at uh, seeing a performance of Peter Pan. And you know in Peter Pan where, where Tinkerbell comes on as a little light? And the first time the little light came on stage when Peter Pan was in the bedroom with Wendy and all the right. kids uh, was the first time my wife started kicking her mother. <laughs> that's sweet. So she became Tinker. Oh, I and, love that. Uh, if you ever met her, that's such exactly a perfect name. Exactly her. Yeah, you yeah. could. Makes it's sense to us. Now, Ned, work. you were truly wonderful in Deliverance. Thank you, ma'am. And I know that movie still is talked about and, and used. People use it as a reference very often in life. We were talking we about it back today. We did it today. Mm. And, and the scene that you had to play, the rape scene, which had to have been difficult, and, and because of that scene, I would think that you have very strong feelings about rape. I, I think I've, I've come to have those feelings yeah. uh, over the years, but probably mostly because of that particular connection, uh, but maybe not. No? And no, maybe not, maybe not only that. Uh, uh, I just I, I perhaps maybe have a slightly different point of view about it. Um, and the point of view is that the point of view that I may have about it is that I, because of having been in that film and playing that scene, I have, I've become aware of how a lot of men feel about it. Mm, about it. Well, how men feel about, I've had a lot of men sort of put off on me their feelings about, <coughs> my, my, the way I sense men feel about rape is, is that in, in the subject of rape, the one thing that a man would never accept is the idea of being the victim. Mm. Mm. And, and what happens in, in our masculine ego, and mine too, I'm not just talking about the other guys, it certainly mm. is. It's just that because I've been the brunt of it a few times, I can say this, and, and uh, my reaction to it all <laughs> is, is terrible and it's violent and not very nice. Yeah. But I've had a lot of people try to push off on me their feelings about, well, you know, that may have happened to you as a character or as an actor, but it would never, would, ever happen yeah. to me. You wrote about this in an article for the New York Times. Yes, tried to. Yeah. yeah. Not, not much of a writer, but... 
And tell our audience what it is that you tried to say in that. I tried to talk about that phenomena of how I think men don't want to think about rape, number one. Mm. They don't want to, we don't really want to deal with it. No, not at all. If we do deal with it, the last choice in the world would be to identify with the victim of the rape. Mm. I think somewhere in our visceral, we would rather identify with the perpetrator of the rape than to identify with the victim. Ergo, some of our feelings about, well, she must have brought it on herself. I yeah. mean, what, what are we kidding here? You know, what is it? What, date rape? Why, why does that? I mean, I mean, you hear conversations like that amongst men today. And it's, it's funny, it's, it's not a generational thing. It doesn't go away. No. Very interesting. You know, the young guys, yeah, young guys say the same dumb things their father yeah. that we said. We you think know? we're all so enlightened. And sure. We're really uh, not. Yeah. And I just think that, boy, that's part of being a man, you know, that, uh, and obviously it's something that, that comes up in prison life. Yeah. But again, we just, we would really prefer to, to have that not dealt with at all. Another perspective. And you, de you know, develop that tell, role. Tell me, what's the... The, the best part of being an actor of your caliber? What, what was the greatest moment? Best part of being an actor is not working. <laughs> oh, stop it. No, no. <laughs> no. no we, we and were still having, getting paid and not they're, working. They're, That's the best part. I have part. a wonderful actor friend, a fellow named Matt, Matt Clark, who's doing mostly directing now. <laughs> Matt, one day we were having this big conversation, he and I and, and Mitch Ryan and some other guys, and all the things about acting were moaning and groaning, and Matt said, you know, I look around at each one of us, and if we had to go to work for a whole day, we'd be in real deep trouble. <laughs> So but, no, I I don't know. The acting's wonderful. I, acting's fun because it's about uh, being a person and learning about yourself as a person, about other people as people. It's uh, it's like a lifelong study in human behavior, for one thing, and from we're, a strange point of view. And we're glad you've been studying as long as you have. Yeah. Ned you. Beatty, everybody. Keep, uh, keep, keep, busy. Busy. keep entertaining us. Yeah, I'll try. Next, Grandma Best, why? Stay tuned. And that means cold. <coughs> right, like that. So, as a public service, we decided to help you dispense the best medicine to your family. It's chicken soup, otherwise known as Jewish penicillin. With matzo balls. That's right, and we're talking the real thing And here. who better to make real chicken soup? With matzo balls? Than a real Jewish grandma. Please welcome Selma Kott. Here she is, <laughs> the Jewish grandma. you are. Should I tell him for real? For real. 82. 82. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> we should all look this good with, at 82. With a nice heavy coat of makeup. <laughs> oh, she looks fabulous. No, no. Now, how long have you been making chicken soup? Well, uh, being 82, a long I time. I've been making 60, it 70 years. 70 oh. years. Did your mom teach you? She told me to make it. Oh, told one me of both. no, but she, told you. She told me. All right. Okay. Let's now, show us how you make chicken let's soup. Let's start. Right, okay. Do we got boiling water? Got boiling water. Right. Let's take the top off. Okay. All right. Okay. It's boiling. I'm not a conventional cook. Well, I put salt in. You I just sort of throw I that throw in. <laughs> put pepper in it. Measure. No, pepper's in it. <laughs> she cooks like we do. Perfect. <laughs> chicken in it. Yeah. Chicken in it. Now, you don't skin it or anything, no? no. You just throw this yeah, sucker in. Now, you can in. use a whole chicken if you want to. Okay. But, uh, oh, God. Oh, now, don't be such a sister. I'm a such a sister. <laughs> Thank you, candy. Selma. Oh. Okay. A you cut that, that up, don't no. you? No. No, because I don't want it to dissolve. <laughs> really? If you, you just cut it, it up, like it will get all over the place. Really? Carrots? Very. <coughs> Carrots? Carrots? You see, I need this chicken soup. I'm You're going to get it. You're get <laughs> We're coming up hot. Now, okay. You know what? I'm going to take some of this off. Yeah, it's a little She's heavy. Should I put more salt in? I'll, I put this on. Watch All me. Right. I'll drink that. All right. Now what? It's hot water with our hands in. Okay, right. now, I know from reading, see what you think about this. Tell me. You know, you whenever you have foods that you had as a child, psychologically, as you grow older, 
when you're not feeling well, you ever want a little piece of toast uh, and a cup of tea and that kind of stuff? Uh, well, I, chicken soup. What are you saying? Really, no, really has medicinal benefits. It's but not. It's, cool. it's not just oh, this joke cool. about oh, a little Jewish penicillin in your grandmother's soup. It does it psychologically really does. make you feel comfortable. I think it needs more salt. It you also do? breaks up a little know, phlegm, it cooked yet. which I is also it. very good. More salt. Nobody well, cares. I'm telling them what this means. Don't taste You're it. You're throwing things in a pot. Don't taste it. Look, this spills already. Okay. Don't okay. Well, just now, Selma. What? Well, Selma. How can you tell? You have a full-time no, job, right? I have a full-time job. Tell everybody what you do. I'm in the retail business. I have a shop at Broadway and 81st Street in New York. Manhattan, Manhattan. Right. And I work 60 hours a week. She does at 82. Now, tell them how you met your husband. You were married for 42 years until uh -huh. his death 17 years ago. Right. Tell them how you met your husband. Oh, you really want that story? Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> why maybe we, not. Why don't yeah. we make the balls? We're make getting the balls. cards. Make, make, make the balls. Right. Right. Give me a spoon. All right. This is a very smart Look, television make, woman here. We make this like so. Okay. Right. Yeah. We throw in the eggs. What is that? What is that? That is shortening. Okay. Shortening. All, right. All right. Crisco? Yeah, throw that down there. No. Crisco? No. What is shortening? Crisco, D. Move fast. You're not very bright, are you? <laughs> Shortening. Honest to God, Selma, I don't cook. I've uh, never used shortening in my life. Well, maybe. Oh, oh, the guilt! The guilt oh already. God. I put the eggs in. Yeah. Now, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Don't tell anybody, because this is very unorthodox. I what is cheat. this? It's baking powder. You put that in the mouth? Yeah, but balls? nobody else does. <laughs> I put it Why in. Why do you put it, it in? It makes them puff up. Okay. It does. That's but valid. I don't tell people. What is okay. this? Don't anyone tell this you. Is, tell don't that. tell anyone. anybody. That's, that's right. what I do. This is a secret. What, now, is, what is that? that? My grandmother would not have approved. The Yankees. This is matzo meal. Matzo, matzo, matzo meal. Matzo meal. You buy this right. anywhere? Anywhere? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mix the whole <laughs> business up like so. Right. Yeah. Add a little water if it's too thick. Water coming up. That's mm. enough. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now. now. Now, uh, now Selma, this has to be refrigerated. Right. Okay. So this is our We're cold matzo. We're putting this in, no, in you the refrigerator. Don't. Put your hands back. Sorry, Selma. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you put that size in, kid, you would have some trouble because oh, it they, would be all over the place. See, they pop up. See these little babies? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're going to be this big when they. Oh, cook. really? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, may I okay. throw these two in? Throw them into the boiling, boiling. Okay. And they'll pop right up. That's enough of that. How's that? It's uh, too big. Too big. Throw it out. Throw it out. They are puffing up. They are. Right. Where's and my they'll spoon? get big and up to Excuse the top. Excuse me, Selma. Right on your jacket. Right, right on your jacket. Okay, I'll put these in. All okay. Right. That's All enough. Right. That's and enough. that's about what happens. You know, this this smells great. Look, it really does. Nice it, looks? it really does. That smells All right. so good. Let's then, reveal then. our finished product. Okay, I'm I got sort of like Julia Child's here. All right, darling, here it is. You're not going to get me Scalpel? to have... You're not going to have this all over my hands. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, oh, now a nice dish. Out so you can reveal no, the yes, so Now, now let me show oh. you look at that. what it looks like. Oh. This is the soup. And look. this one well, is standing it? away. Look, these are the matzo balls. Let me oh, try. Yeah. Here, darling. Try. Let me I give want to try. There's a, a white right. color here. All right. Give yeah. me that. OK. Here you go. All right. Selma, are you going out dancing after this? Of course. She <laughs> means it. She is. Is she this is. Selma Koch fabulous, is everybody? Selma, thank you, Selma. Thank, thank you for being here. I thank hope you. it takes care of you. my illness. Oh, it's yeah. delicious. Thank you, darling. You oh, are my well. Lord, it is Next, delicious. Isn't how it a new fun? parent can find the help they need to cope? Like Selma. Come back. thing a parent is likely to notice soon after their firstborn arrives is that there are no owner's manual. No, none. You are on your own. Now, scary as all of that sounds, there is help. And Lifetime has a new show for all of you. It's called The Parent Survival Guide. And here to tell us all about it is the host, Kate Mulgrew. <laughs> Here, I think. 
Tell me about it. Welcome. All I can think about is chicken soup. Oh, oh what, did you try it? No, oh. they wouldn't let me touch. They wrapped it's, my I'll knuckles. get you some. I'll Delicious. get you some. Delicious. Welcome to Welcome. Last time. Thank you. Is it nice to you guys for Have weeks? You? Yeah. Of course, I feel like we live together here. <laughs> we do in a way. Never see each other. You're shooting here? Yeah, right, yeah, across, yeah. The right across the hall. Right across the now, hall. we know that you have two children, and yes. that's part How of your you involvement. Find this house? This oh, we, the we're, yeah, we're, we're really very thorough right. here. And I, I, I suppose that's part of, of the reason it's for soup. you doing this show. It's soup on She's me. She's staring at me. I am staring. Yeah. I thought, yeah. what a little bit. Barry, Joan, and David. Yeah. Well, is you'll gone. never see it. You'll never see it. You talk like this. Um, anyway, I'm just going to continue it's here. All yeah, 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 I know. I'm a, I'm a messy person. Frank do, always says yes. you can make a bullion base out of any of my clothes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's true. Anyway, you have two kids, I two do. boys. Mm -hmm. And Six I guess and five, what I want to ask you about that, you're a busy lady. You work all the time. What's the toughest part about all of it? I was just thinking about that in the dressing room coming before I came out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Smitty. <laughs> Four minutes. Uh, to be as honest about it as I can, because somebody gave me an interview that I'd done last week, and it said my opening statement was, if I were indeed a great mother, I would be at home raising my children. And I put it down, I looked at it, and I thought, this is the glaring truth. Oh, and you better just, face it. Yeah. Because one can talk till the cows come home about this interior conflict of should I mother or should I be in the workplace? But I think that the fundamental conflict is selfishness. As an infant cannot determine its power over the mother, only the mother can determine her power over the infant. And why have them if you cannot nurture them? So I can say to you that I feel that I'm making a superior contribution to our society by being an artist. I can try to say that to you. Yeah. But then you're likely to watch some of the bad stuff I do on primetime television. Oh, I doubt that. I think what, I, what women really have to say is that we're dealing with a very, with an extraordinary epoch, a time in society and history which we'll look back on, I think, with amazement. We feel that we must, it's, it's peer pressure, I think, about I think a mothering. lot of it is. Yes, I do agree with that. And I think that it's very <clears> tough <throat> for me, and I can only speak for myself, to swallow this division about my children versus work. I'm doing it. But I, as I looked at that sentence, I thought, yeah. that's just about the size of a sugar. It's a payment you make. Is it a payment? Yeah. It's, it's clearly a choice. Yeah, I but I mean, it's also, you, there are certain compromises or decisions, and it's, it's never clear cut. I don't think it ever is. I think because you want to stay home, you want to work, and you make. You have don't to make think it's clear cut. My mother and I were I talking know. about this yesterday in the know. kitchen. She's raised eight children. Yeah. Did she work? There was never a question that she had to be at home with the children. Yeah. And I thought, what's happened to us? Yeah. First of all, we only have 2.5 children. Yeah. Now I hear women actually saying she has more than four children. How vulgar of her! <laughs> How could she think of doing so that? <laughs> in our Mother's Day, you had children. You got yeah. married and you gave life. Yeah. Now we're supposed to have 2.5 and do what our husbands do. I don't think it works out in the end. Well, with the Parent Survival Guide, yeah. hopefully we're going to answer some of these questions. And yeah. you brought a clip yeah. for Tell us, us to see. Somebody brought a yeah. <laughs> Tell us a very odd brought clip. It, and we'd love to see Now this it. is a yeah. workshop that is part yeah. of the show, yeah. right? Of which time so he missed dinner time, time and he was fed later. But yeah, I can't. And what, but what do you think with Kate? Did you just come home? I had just come home. Just come home. So what do you think was going on? I understood it. That's what? The What's problem. going on? His excitement. Mm -hmm. He has his terrible need for my attention. Mommy, mommy, mommy. I am going to get. I am going to get your attention, however I need it. And I also think maybe payback. Yes, yeah. also maybe a payback. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I think that children often do not know the way sometimes to get. They can't yes, articulate attention. things the same way that we can. They mm -hmm. can't say, "Listen, mom, you've been away for a few days. I really need you to pay attention to me. So what I'm going to do is, if I can't get you, if I can't get you to engage with me in a positive way, I'm going to figure out some way to get you to engage with me because children do need that." Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What, do you, what do you want to accomplish with the Parent Survival Guide? Very basically and very quickly, because I see these people do it. Compassion for all women, that we're all in this together. We've got to stop judging one another and being so harsh on one another. Yeah. First of all, you've got to forgive yourself and get on with life. We have to do what we have to do, and the best thing is to take one another's hand and say, we've got the kids, we've got the pressure, now let's just hold one another up and do it as beautifully and as honestly as, as is possible. 
Wouldn't that be nice? It's very possible. It is possible. Women are by nature loving creatures. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, Lifetime. Wish you luck. It's Thanks really. very much. We're doing our yeah. best at yeah. Lifetime. Yeah. Congratulations on the new show. You. And raising your children. <laughs> so now listen, the Parent Survival Guide can be seen here on Lifetime Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m. right before Attitudes and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. as well, all right? So you watch. Kate, thank you again. Thank you. Thanks Thanks for now am I just supposed to stay here and yeah. Touching story about a father and daughter who have just met after 44 years. You want to see this? When our next guest was five years old, she was told that the man raising her was not her real father. After that, nothing more was ever said. She admits as a child, she often dreamed of a day when her daddy would come to take her home. Still, throughout her life, she had no idea he was relentlessly searching over the country for her. Four weeks ago, after 44 years, he found her. This is Diane Bostwick, anxiously awaiting the plane that would deliver her father, a man she had never met. When he finally arrived, 44 years of waiting was over, and 44 years of lost love was found. Please welcome Diane Bostwick and her dad, Roscoe Walker. I, I, I have to ask you this, Diane, and you too, Roscoe. When you got to the airport and you knew you were going to see your daddy for the first time, were you very nervous? What was going through your mind? I wanted to know what he looked like. And my heart was pounding so fast that I felt sick. And a couple of times, the, the photographers that were there offered to get me a glass of water because they thought I was going to faint. I bet. And then we got inside of the waiting area, and the plane was stalled right out oh. on the runway. <laughs> You had to wait it even longer. It was awful. It was another half hour wait. How did you feel, Roscoe? Well, truthfully, I thought that uh, <clears throat> that plane was never going to get there. And then when it, when it, after I got out of uh, New York, going to Providence, it was one of those little business planes, you know. Yeah. I thought, dear God, if this thing's going to crack up, don't let it be for us here. I, you know, I, if, if, if that was to be my fate, I wanted it on the way home, not up there. Yeah. All right. It took 44 years for you to find Diane. What happened? Tell us the story. Well, it was during World War II, and like so many marriages, it broke up. I had a broken marriage. And we, we came back from overseas, and it was in um, January. Well, in fact, it was Christmas Day. And we were to get a 30-day leave. Um, but they kept us there until after Christmas, or after New Year's, rather. And then they was going to give us a 30-day leave. So they brought uh, several busloads of the girls in the neighborhood there to dance with the sailors and so on and so forth for the New Year's Eve party, and it was there that I met her mother. And um, you fell in love? Well, then I went on a 30-day leave, and when I come back, I was in the hospital for 30 days, and I had her address, so I wrote to her, and she came to the hospital to see me. Mm -hmm. And she was um, a beautiful girl, and uh, so when I got out of the hospital, I went to see her. <laughs> and Diane was conceived? That's right. I see. And then her parents took Diane away well, with what, her mother? What happened was that <clears throat> I got transferred to Great Lakes, right. and um, in the interim of time, I did not know that her mother was pregnant. and. I didn't get out of the service until the 23rd of the following January, and uh, she was born on the 14th. So I was divorced in the following August, and I went back to find her mother, and I could never find her. Now, she had slipped away out of her parents' house and because they didn't approve, and she had sent you a postcard. Well, she, she sent me the postcard in June, right. after Diane was born in January. 
But you have to realize, 45 years ago, things were much different than they are today. Yeah. And she was a, a very beautiful young girl. Uh, she was raised very strictly and, and uh, very religiously. And back in those days, for a girl not married to be pregnant was quite yeah, a sin. Yeah, unforgivable, yeah. And uh, so from the time that I found out, dear. the postcard actually said, we have a baby daughter and looks exactly like you. Oh. And then your search began. Then my search began. For 44 began. years. Diane, what did you feel about when you found out that you had a real daddy? Did you hope one day you would see him? Did it, was that with you all the time? It was always there. Um, after my mother told me, our life wasn't perfect, and there would be a lot of hard times, and I was an only child, and I would lay in the center of my bed, and I had stuffed animals that I talked to, and I would stretch my arms out as far as they would go with the stuffed animals on each side, and I'd lay in the middle, and I'd say, someday, my daddy is going to come and get us and he's going to take us away and we're going to live just like the people on TV. Okay. Because I used to fantasize that I was the child of Leave it to Beaver, yeah, uh, all those yeah. homey family shows, and I wanted to be like them. So all I did was live in a pretend and fantasy world. What do you guys think you've missed most about not having each other? Well, you miss certainly the love and the growing up as a child from the time it's born on through all the stages of of uh, little girls, middle-sized girls, big girls, and so on and so forth. Certainly, I'm Esther Marriage, and uh, I have two grandsons that yes. are super boys. You've that met them? I didn't them? know I had. You've met them? Oh, sure, sure. They treated me like I was a king. I bet. Why wouldn't they? Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're fine boys. Now, what, what do you think is the one thing that you'd like to give Diane? That I would what? Like to give Diane. You know, is there something that, well, when besides I'm, love, and it's very difficult to make up for all those lost years. Well, certainly I loved her without even knowing her. Yeah. Because she was mine. Yeah. And um, when I saw her the first time, it was like Christmas and New Year's and Fourth of July and everything all rolled into one. So all I can do at this point in time, to whatever time I have left, is certainly to try to uh, be with her as much as possible, and my grandsons, and, and certainly their wives, which are my granddaughters, and try to make uh, whatever amends I can make. Now, I want to tell you something quite wonderful, the, uh, an extra added something about this wonderful story. Diane is a nurse and worked very hard, raised two children, lives in a one-bedroom apartment in, in Coventry, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Roscoe is a very wealthy businessman. Isn't that great? <laughs> I adore this story. This is a multimillionaire who is now going to make your life easier for you, I know, and your boys. And you all are together and you have a family. So it's really like a fairy tale story, isn't it? Aren't they grand? Can I have time to read the, the poem? I want you to all hear a poem that Roscoe wrote to Diane uh, a week after they were together. Diane is going to read it. Of all the things that my father could give me, this poem is the most precious to me and always will be. Her big brown eyes were sparkling. In her hand, she held a rose. She had it pressed against her chest and standing on her toes. I knew my search had ended. My heart began to pound. My knees grew weak, I could not speak, my daughter I had found. Her lovely face was fading as my eyes grew dim with tears. The moment came that I had dreamed for 44 long years. I faltered slightly on my step. Her eyes betrayed alarm. The instant passed and then at last I held her in my arms. Our cheeks were wet with tears of joy. We stood our arms entwined. I wanted all the world to know the girl I held was mine. I know not what the future holds. I know not what's in store. I only know that from here on, I couldn't ask for more. And neither could I. <laughs> it's the most wonderful story. I thank both of you. I, 
I wish you nothing but love and success and happiness forever. Live forever, Roscoe. We'll be right back. Next guest began her television career at age three. She did. She grew up on the Donna Reed show playing Donna's daughter, and while other young women flirted at movies, she flirted in movies with Elvis. Now you enjoy her as Christine Armstrong on the ABC series Coach with that gorgeous man. In this clip, she's faced with a relationship issue women know well. Let's take a look. Well, Hayden, if anyone sees an opportunity to move in, as you say, maybe that's because you've never defined your territory. Now, I know you don't like to feel trapped. I've never even tried to pin you down. But if you want to define our relationship, I'm all for that. No, I don't want to define anything, Christine. I want to leave things as they are. Fine. I have no problem with that. But that means you can't get crazy if I want to go to the opera with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Shelly Fabre. Yes. Thank you. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Hello, hello, hello. You're coming welcome. here. You're in the middle. Right. Thank you. Now, you yes. have come here specifically today specifically, yes. to show us how to tie-dye. Yes. yes. I said, get me to New York and let is, me tell uh, these people how to tie-dye. Is this something still going on? Tie-dye? <laughs> this is making... It's a relic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's truly making a resurgence. This is... Is it? Yes, this the is... The kids are all wearing it. They are. They are. It's, it's big. It is. That's all right. right. It is. And I am here to show you the, the, the ways of tie-dye. All right. First, we are going to make what is called a rosette. Okay. So take your T-shirts, Without please. your gloves. Without yeah. your gloves. Without yes. your Without, gloves. Well, yes. you can do it with your gloves. Okay, leave them on. So, what do we right. do? So I better leave them on. You, you gather it like this. You take your rubber bands. You just poke a little finger through and do your rubber bands around there. Pretty tight, pretty okay. tight. Doesn't have to be exactly even. Oh, That's it. Maybe no. do two. Are you not doing this right? I'm See, doing it this just is perfect. Johnny Angel. <laughs> oh, I love him. Okay, now do. She's a little out of control. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, well don't worry about it. No, I won't. Now I won't. what? All right. Take another rubber band. Do another one. <laughs> do make one more rosette. In uh, I can't even oh, get it doesn't the matter where, No, you're doing fine. Just we can have a big rosette. I'm making this for <laughs> Craig. Huge rosette. <gasps> okay. Yes, you are making this I'm for making Craig it for T. Nelson. Craig. Craig T. Nelson loves this show. I he know. loves the two. Craig, you think you are wonderful. Nice. Yes, yes, he did. This is excellent. This is excellent. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're going to do two a piece, and then I'm going to show oh, you how two. to make another design. Yes. Okay. I've got two okay. rosettes. I'm, I'm inspired. We well, can do as many as you want, but that's two. That's two. Only do one shirt. Then do second color. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, uh, um, Shelly, tell yes. us what that means. Okay, that means I'm going to tell you Shelley in a minute what that means. Know. I want to show you how to do an accordion pleat. Watch oh, this. There, here's right. another design. Okay. You fold your shirt in half. A new shirt. Okay, a new, a new shirt, shirt. New shirt. Okay. And then you just start. You roll it forward and then back. Forward and then back. For then when you when you get up to the sleeve, you roll the sleeve in. Okay. Forward back. Forward back. Forward, back. Are you all paying attention to this? Forward, back. Pick up your just rubber band. Just join in, audience. That's right. Just a second. And you put the, you put the first t-shirts into the water over there. You want to soak your t-shirts. In here? Yep, 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 yep. And is that yes? Okay. Put mine in, please. Put Thank yours you in. Much. Thank you, D. And you, you do these. Oh, in, D has the thing. In the water because this this makes the the dye absorb faster. So oh. that's all we have to do now. Okay. Now we put on our gloves. Okay. Or we put on our gloves. You already have your gloves on. Wait a second. Okay, wait. Okay. I'm still Hang I'm on still just a second this. here. Wait. Okay. This and, is the way it's you... supposed to look, right? Well, that's one. Yes, that's a version of how it can look. This now, is our rosetti. Please, let's open our dye bottles. Open the dye bottles. <laughs> pour it in. Yes, pour it in. About half the bottle. About half the bottle. See, we all have... Okay, that's good. Mine's sort of the new plum that's, color. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Stir. How about stir. mine dark? Stir. Okay. Stir, stir, stir. Okay. Stir. Okay. okay. Uh, grab a shirt. Grab a, grab a shirt. shirt. Sort of Which bring it out a little bit, or or not. Bring it out. <laughs> and that's it. Dump them in. Dump them in. I'm wait. Dump this one. Dump this one. Okay, you're doing fine. Doing fine. Stir. Must stir. D, what have you oh. done? <laughs> D, what have you done? <laughs> this is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I, this is going to be an interesting it's design. It's very on your blue. <laughs> very right. blue. All right. Here's now, yours. 
Stir it up. Stir it up. Put in the onion hole. <laughs> okay. Here. Very nice. Take okay. out. Take out. Wait, let me okay. get this one out first. Hey, All this right. looks pretty good. This is it. <laughs> this is mine. It's you can also do... Yeah, it, well, what do we yes, do with it? Say, what, <laughs> you wring it out over this. Oh, just wear it. Wait a second. Try it on. <laughs> Try it on now. No, you take your rubber bands. You cut your rubber bands. I'm going to show you a okay. tie-dyed shirt. Just a second. Right. We're okay. in big. We're just finished. Just a minute. We're finished. almost We're almost done. This We're almost done. Cut your rubber bands. Big. Cut those. Cut those. Can you see? There, there. Here comes a rosette. Wait a second. Oh see? yes. Oh, Shelly, you did it. Success on thank you coach. Thank Say you hello. Very much. I will. Right. I will. As I You'll come back and do something real. Thank you. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Additionally, every year, the Neiman Marcus Christmas catalog features one special little goodie that is the perfect his and hers. Let's look. This time round, it's a quest for the West. Two registered horses some great western riding gear, and hold on to your Stetson, the ultimate show saddle. Yes. Voila! One of a kind. Look at Can that. you believe this? Hand tooled, hand laced, loaded. This is absolutely loaded with sterling silver and 18 karat gold. This is gorgeous. The Indian heads on it are 18 karat gold, oh. longhorns, conchos, everything you can possibly imagine now, is on this saddle. The price, harness, and Corona included That's is a mere hundred and eight thousand dollars. Well, I mean it is a one of a kind. Let's be fair. Imagine? Oh no. Lord, help us! <laughs> all right, for special orders, all you really have to do is just pick up the phone. You want us to get the phone for you? <laughs> Any of you? You just call one eight hundred Neiman's, and they will send this out to you. So you know what you're oh, ordering boy. for those of us who love horseback riding. This is yeah, tell us what all of this is. This is the bridle here, and this is all eighteen karat gold Indian oh, heads inlaid on sterling silver. It weighs a ton, by the way. You yeah. have to have a very big horse for this, oh. about 18 hands. How would you ever get it on him? This is the breastplate right here. This goes around the horse here. And it is absolutely magnificent. Now, Look at this. This the is horn, solid sterling right here. And for 108,000, you would think it would work. It doesn't? <laughs> oh, uh -uh. get it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is solid sterling silver. The top of it with the lion's head is uh, 18 karat gold. It is really a magnificent piece of art. I think it's a must for under the tree. What do you think? Just I put think it so. in your living room. Yeah, Who needs I a think horse? so. Well, another attitude. Bye, everybody. <laughs> to receive the lifetime attitude tip sheet with information on today's show, call 1-900-773-4040. Today's show and listening number is free. The cost of the call and tip sheet is two dollars. To avoid ordering duplicate tip sheets, please check your issue number before placing the call.